afternoon. Uh, good morning, everybody in different locations. Uh, hope you're all doing well and uh, welcome to Art Smiley exhibition. So the today's session, I'll be talking in three parts, uh, introducing about uh, Art Smiley, and then uh, I'll be they have we have uh, some two special guests. Uh, um, you know, they will be talking about uh, a little bit of uh, Art Smiley, and also on um, you know they will be motivating us. Uh, you know, just giving there as a guest of honors speeches, and uh, then we will be introducing into the main part uh, all the artists, and uh, they will showcase uh, their artworks as well. So this is the main part, uh, uh, three parts into this. Probably the session I'm expect at least a couple of hours to go uh, from now. Okay, so coming to us, uh, you know, um, we've been having isolated uh, phase. Uh, you know, every one of us in the world, everyone, you know, in this, uh, nobody has been spared. Uh, every one of us has to isolate, you know, because of the COVID pandemic. It changed uh, how we do things and what we, you know, uh, our daily routines has been changed greatly. So. Art also got uh, impacted. A lot of artists used to exhibit outside. We also do a lot of exhibitions with our partner in Hilton. You know, we stopped it. So we've gone back to now online, uh, you know, showing that uh, we want to come back and we are strong and we are together in this. And uh, you know, a lot of artists, uh, you know, during this pandemic, they utilized uh, very well and they shared their experiences and they put into artwork. So we thought uh, showcase all of this in one platform. So this is where we are today. And we have around 27 artists from 16 countries uh, exhibiting their works today. So I'll uh, now briefly talk about uh, Art Smiley. Art Smiley is actually established uh, in uh, almost uh, 2017 since its operation. And uh, it's been founded by a co -founder. We are the co-founders of Art Smiley. Um, we both have uh, been uh, art passionates and uh, we've seen the journeys of uh, artists and the struggles of uh, you know, uh, artists so we thought we want to do something. That's how we come back, uh, you know, I founded Art Smiley. Art Smiley is a multi-sided online platform uh, where artists and art buyers uh, can connect 24 by seven. Uh, you know, artists can upload their paintings and it will be go through our curators and then showcased into the public. Uh, whereas art buyers uh, can search and uh, buy their favorite paintings, uh, you know, deliver to their doorsteps without any hassle. So this is what uh, we are about uh, and uh, I will be, Talking about our mission, our mission is as to actually to make art more affordable and accessible to all communities. Today we see that uh, every one of us uh, um, has opinion that art is something special. Yes, it is special, but it's not for everybody. It's only like uh, some collectors or some rich people holding. We want to change this uh, uh, perception you know, in the art world. We want to make uh, art is affordable to accessible to all the communities, every household. For different purposes, they can use it. but we want to make it accessible. At the same time, we want to provide a viable career to all of our artists. You know, this is very important. I've been saddened that many times I thought of, you know, if you look at uh, uh, probably 80% of the artists have not been properly representation uh, by the galleries, in, by the traditional galleries, and also their earnings are very less. So we want to change this, and that's where uh, our smiley comes in place. So what is our products and services we offer? Actually, we do services to both uh, B2B and B2C, and we sell original art paintings. Uh, these are the art, uh, artworks uh, being showcased by our all art community. And we do the replicas uh, of original artworks. Uh, it, it is, uh, you know, prints. We make into art prints of uh, some replicas, some limited edition prints, and we sell this. We also have an additional uh, um, tool which has not been very greatly used across. Uh, we want to showcase and rent the painting. This is the uh, option. Uh, is only a couple of players in the world who has art rentals, uh, including as one of us. Uh, art rentals is a great tool uh, um, because a lot of customers, uh, they don't know what to buy and uh, they don't know exactly if this suits their walls. Uh, art rentals is a great option for those kind of people uh, you know, who want to bring their walk and showcase it and feel comfortable and then buy it. And also, if you look at the hotels and corporate offices, if you visit them, uh, they always have the same painting showcased in their walls. You know, it, if you are a repeated uh, client, you know, you will see them like bored of seeing the same kind of painting. So this is where also art rentals help a great extent. Uh, you know, those customers who want to decorate their walls on a regular basis, you know, it's art rentals will be a great option. Other than uh, these products, we also do a lot of private commissioning and to our clients, some, uh, some people want their uh, 
you know, choice and, you know, colors and anything they want specialized, uh, you know, customized to them. We do also a lot of uh, private art commissioning. Sir. And other than this, the last other product we offer to mostly to corporate sectors sir, is our art consulting services in partnerships with our, uh, you know, other uh, interior designers and architects. We do provide the, uh, you know, full uh, end-to-end uh, customized art consulting services as well. So I talk about, uh, I mean, before I go into talking about our guests in a minute, so we also have uh, today our platform has um, more than 1300 uh, registered artists from over 50 countries. And this gives us a unique uh, kind of, uh, you know, platform with a lot of uh, variety of artworks from different parts of the world, representing different cultures, different ideas, and very kind of unique. And these are all, um, um, you know, we also, Having said that, uh, we also have uh, uh, connections with the B2B and B2C. This is helping us uh, to be uh, something unique, uh, our platform in the region. Okay. So now I will be introducing uh, our uh, guests. We have uh, two special guests uh, uh, come to today's uh, in, in, our, in our opening of this Art Smiley online show. Um, this is one of our uh, guests. Uh, she is Rana. Her name, I mean, uh, Ms. Rana Hazi Rasoli. She's the CEO of uh, Cyrus Group of Companies. Uh, and, uh, and she also, uh, you know, have other same similar position in the Ronsa Commodities uh, Private Limited. It's also part of the Cyrus Group. And uh, I would like to, you know, say a bit of uh, Rana Howard uh, introduction. You know, she's also not only a CEO of a corporate company, but she's also my client. Uh, and uh, she's an outstanding, I mean, uh, a great human being. Our relation is uh, keep on growing and with Art Smiley. And I, it's a really privilege uh, to be calling her into this stage uh, and, and she accepted. And I'm really personally thankful to her uh, for coming into this uh, platform. And I also bit talk about her. Uh, you know, she, she has a uh, great uh, passion about art and uh, she has done, uh, you know, um, what you call a lot of initiatives in this uh, part, actually. She has herself run an Instagram uh, page uh, called Last Life Dubai. It's focused on creating industrial art using industrial waste materials. I mean, uh, if you look at to her in, uh, Instagram page, uh, you see that, uh, you know, she has industry, you know, she runs an industry, a lot of uh, drums and, you know, oil and gas stuff, they will uh, use it. This become rather than wasting them, you know, she is actually converting them into pet beds and a lot of other stuff. Uh, she make it and reusable. Uh, and it's, it's a, you know, please visit her page as well, Last Life Dubai. Uh, and other than this, uh, and she's a multi-talented woman. Uh, she has passionate about academia and she holds many degrees. I don't know how, when she get time all this, but uh, you know, she has a master's in philosophy and master's in science and master's in law. And uh, she done uh, all this uh, education from prestigious universities like uh, Oxford and Trinity College in Dublin. And uh, you know, one other aspect, as I, as I said, uh, she's also an audio and sound engineer and she learned, she has a hobby of uh, kickboxing. She do a lot of other stuff as well. You know, I mean, she's a, a really, truly inspiration to many of our artists as a you know, woman entrepreneur and uh, being also in uh, corporate roles, uh, managing so many different things. And she, she's still, uh, you know, like kind of activated. She wants to do a PhD further uh, and uh, especially cross-border uh, securities and many other aspects. She do a lot of studies and papers as well. So I would like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, uh, Ms. Rana into um, to Art Smiley exhibition. Dear Rana, can you hear us? Please. I can uh, indeed. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Rana. Thanks uh, for joining Art us. Please, uh, you know, you take the stage now to uh, give your speech. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord and Aruna. Uh, what can I say? Um, I actually got introduced to Art Smiley not too long ago, perhaps just a little over a year, and I was absolutely stunned by the impeccable beautiful amount of artists they have and the amount of work they put on it. I mean, this is coming from a client side. I'm sure I'm so very excited to see all of your artworks today. Um, you guys are exceptionally talented and I'm so happy to be part of this community. Aruna and Lourdes are unbelievable. From a customer service perspective, uh, you guys are really, I, I, I don't have enough good words to say. I mean, start to finish, they're there and they will make sure the job is done. The amount of passion that you see uh, within this community is actually quite unbelievable. Um, so today's about you guys. I don't want to talk uh, anything more about myself. This is not about me. Uh, I do create some industrial arts and I take some initiative, but the whole point of uh, my involvement in the arts scene uh, in the region is 
uh, you know, running a manufacturing company is to raise awareness for a more conscious mode of living in a progressively capitalistic world and um, within the industrial sector more specifically. Oil and gas companies, as you all know, they kind of don't really implement a very creative lens. So um, I'm just hoping to implement something that will help them strategize um, as well within their supply chains to have an impact on the environmental sector as well. And also, of course, to a degree of self-expression in a generally mundane sector. Um, but as I said, uh, this is really nothing compared to the wonderful, beautiful art, art pieces that you guys have created. I've been following Art Smiley for a while now, and I'm also an art enthusiast. So let's talk a little bit about the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it's been impactful to say the least and traumatic for so many people around the world. I'm sure so many of you guys have heard the same type of rhetoric about adapting to the new normal and perhaps you've hit a plateau with your creative output. But beneath all of this, there is a grim reality and it's the choke of money. With the global economy that's been kind of stalled, the wealth that's fueled the art world for the past 20 years and we've seen a period of discombobulating growth and museum expansions and soaring auction prices and more art fairs by the month, all of a sudden is as a sudden standstill. So with art spaces closed and fairs canceled due to the COVID pandemic, there was only one place left for galleries to go. It's the internet. But my question is, and I'm sure many of you have a similar question, is this a temporary reactionary business measure or does it signal something that's more of a permanent shift towards e-commerce for the art market? So during the lockdowns of self-isolation periods, art has been kind of flourishing globally. We've all spent, I think, a little bit too much time on social media through these months for it to be healthy, watching cat videos on Instagram and whatnot, but is a symbol of hope. Former to relay health guidelines and share messages of hope as well as the ever dynamic Italian singing to each other on the balconies and concerts taking place online. And even something interesting is the Mona Lisa. And I believe that her birthday was on the 15th of April and she's been chosen for the uh, World Day. She's been revisited in a variety of ways. Has anybody seen something similar? The images of her in the self-isolating mask in the Louvre Museum or her covering her smile with a surgical mask? Uh, this is a true emblem of the art community that despite the crisis, art is demonstrating its resilience every single day. Unlike other industries, the art market creates its own rules and is not bound by basic supply and demand economics. Investors often know that they're overpaying when they're buying directly from galleries. So artists know that they don't build up their personal brand value through those places. So sometimes we're at a standstill and we're thinking, what's the point? As for the art market, the shift to digital means galleries have to kind of reinvent themselves for younger millennials and create extreme value for artists through digital channels that they want not to become obsolete. So thank you very much, Art Smiley, for being ahead of the game always. So the most successful artists are now building their social media followers and developing brand equities independently of many galleries, but a handful of successful galleries are doing a great job. But the vast majority are relatively endangered unless they make drastic changes. Luxury is ultimately an extreme value creation and the art market is no exception. If an artist or gallery doesn't excite or make an impact, then there's no value. This is the danger with physical galleries and spaces, but now we've seen in the new digital era, the art market can kind of manipulate the strings of how they raise that demand. Whereas comparatively, physical spaces are restrictive by nature and they're bound by physical elements. So everybody kind of you know, expected that there would be market chaos following the pandemic and it would kind of signal a plummet in demand for art. But interestingly enough, the opposite is happening, but not in all segments. <clears throat> While traditionally somewhat anti-cyclical to the stock market, uh, the luxury art market is growing during the pandemic as stocks remain kind of robust. And this reflects the uncertainty of investors who are looking at art as a long-term value. Now, last year I attended this very interesting contemporary gallery. I'm not going to name it, but the gallerist was kind of sitting lifeless on his chair and he was quite arrogant. And I think he was actually picking his nose at one stage and there was no information about the painter. There was no storytelling. When he told me about the price, there was no reference point of value. So the gallery made one critical mistake that they provided no brand equity and no experience. All of the rules of luxury as what's seen as art was ignored. So as a result of this, I kind of walked away and the gallery missed an opportunity to sell. But extreme value creation through brand building and storytelling and customer experience and customer care as you're seeing on this website is as important to the art world as any other luxury category. Now in the digital realm, you're essentially the conductor of your own symphony. 
as you guys know, you're creating your own space and however you imagine it and you're defining it and experiencing without the sound of kind of, you know, uh, screaming babies and shuffling feet of tourists over your shoulder and so on. And this kind of brings us back to the backbone and theme of today's seminar, which is alone but together, which lends us to the theme of connectivity. Now, an estimated 4.5 billion people use the internet on a regular basis. I know that sounds really boring. I'm not going to flood you with statistics, but that just equates to about 59% of the world's population being online. Now, I found this stunning little statistic uh, by Cisco, and they estimated by next year, 2021, 5.5 billion people will have access to smartphones, and 5.3 billion people will have access to clean running water. More people will have access to smartphones than running water. If that's not crazy, I don't know what is. The impact of global connectivity is profound, and it will only continue to amplify. There's so many ways to look at this, from discovery to access for people who have never been able to travel and experience the Tate Modern or any other art app gallery, let's say. Art is kind of entering the virtual world through social media, like Facebook, Instagram. Now, there was a huge leap, incredible leap for many artists, and then they suddenly, you guys had the means to showcase your creations to people all over the world and reach new customers. And before the internet, obviously artists gained limited audiences by connecting with gallery owners and museums and so on and so forth. But these efforts weren't necessarily difficult, but it did create a barrier, a barrier for entry for many artists. Anybody can, you know, uh, post up a painting and uh, post it online, you know, for the world to enjoy. And if you're lucky, perhaps somebody at the other side of the world will be, you know, will come to purchase it. But with startups that are working on accelerating this process, and guiding you through it, we can observe what seems like a progressive shift to an almost total shift to div digital viewership almost overnight. So it brought us to a crossroads of the democratization of art, low barriers to entry that's more accessible to us, that's more accessible to people around the world. So this brings me to uh, my next point that we all know how the pandemic has affected the art market, but what if we ponder for a second, how has art affected the pandemic? So what we know about art and, you know, all of these expressive type of things is that it helps quickly communi communicate ideas through very memorable visuals. Public art can be used as kind of like a directive tool in crisis to benefit our general well-being. And when artists create uh, public art featuring masks, for example, they're reflecting our current experiences. They send very powerful messages to the public. It guides and signals how people should interact and behave within a space. So visual cues, cues uh, they help us understand how we fit into a space and make statements about perhaps what a community values. And we've seen so many pictures online about artistic interventions, people taking things into their own hands, placing masks on statues all over the world to spread messages of public safety and social distancing. And they're all essentially friendly reminders to wear a mask and forge an environment of solidarity. So now that we're all wearing masks to reduce the spread of COVID, Masks are becoming more innovative. A range of creative masks are allowing us to kind of continue expressing ourselves and encourage us to wear masks in the first place. And, you know, the designs are all sorts of crazy. I don't know what else you guys have seen, but I've seen leopards and I've seen uh, paintings and I've seen abstract. It's, 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 just, it's just crazy. But whether it's fun or functional, it kind of increases in usage and promotes public health. And we're living proof that basically this impact will soon be in the history books. So the role of arts also works to kind of get health messages out to a wider public. Think of the messages that you've been seeing through the pandemic from the WHO and so on and so forth. And we've seen kind of like a similar trend that alerted people about symptoms of Ebola, uh, to inform them about HIV prevention or to combat misinformation about vaccines. So it just shows the kind of multifaceted uh, approach that art has in our society. Now, recently, um, I've read this study that was conducted by the World Health Organization that was aptly named uh, what is the evidence on the role of the arts in improving health and well-being? And it was a very interesting article. Now, it summarizes years of scientific research into the effect of different forms of arts on our health. And the list was, oh gosh, there was like hundreds of studies. And it, the, the references alone takes up to about 70 pages, more than half of the report itself. But they kind of consider different art forms, such as performing arts, visual arts, and taking part in cultural activities. And ultimately, the final conclusion was that the overall evidence shows that there is a robust impact of the arts on both physical and mental health. So <clears throat> they showed that the arts were able to kind of address complex health issues, such as those having uh, physical and mental components, and that arts intervention offered an economical solution. So some of the examples of this was really interesting, and it used, 
uh, you know, uh, the use of like dance therapy um, as a therapy for Parkinson's, music and language development and so on and so forth. But even though that arts was not a priority during the peak of this pandemic, places where the worst of the outbreak seemed to kind of pass, may, they, they may want to think about how the arts can be part of the healthcare recovery process. I mean, myself working in the industrial sector, I preach this every day. And, you know, especially as several vaccine trials are already in phase three, it's a good time to start involving people that are not in the art community to start involving artists in healthcare communication, for example. So what about after the pandemic? Uh, we've learned to cook in 10 different cuisines on YouTube. Our cats and dogs are getting sick of us and you've created so many new pandemic inspired pieces. Where does this leave us now? The new elements are that the most exciting ones are yet to come. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of this artist. Uh, her name is Josie Bellini. And I just recently discovered her. She's a crypto artist and she tells the story of the crypto ecosystem. I know that sounds a little bit strange. It's a little bit heavy on the finance, but what's interesting about her is that she utilizes canvas and paint in her work, but she also releases digital art and augmented reality scenes to fully immerse her viewers. So uh, new Dad, technology. I not hear you actually. Oh, you can't hear? Uh, we lost your voice. Huh? We lost your voice. Oh, is this better? No, but now not. better, yes. Sorry. Better, yes? Oh, my apologies. I'm sorry. The connection is a bit iffy sometimes. It's okay. So the interesting thing about Josie Bellini, uh, as one of the few artists that implements VR, is that ultimately VR is going to enable kind of like how artists collaborate across the globe. And fundamentally, these technologies are reshaping how the artistic process is at each stage. So that's ideation, creation, and launch. So from teams of architects that are using all sorts of stuff, digital whiteboards to design buildings, to artists video conferencing and so on and so forth. What we've seen is technology ultimately can unlock creativity and VR art will, ultimately, will undoubtedly continue to kind of evolve in unpredictable ways that keep pushing the boundaries. So we're all connected, uh, but socially disconnected. Has social distancing helped foster understanding between communities? As we're globally grappling with inequalities that have always existed, but are far more visible and striking in the past few weeks, we're seeing art being used as a tool to create stronger communities. And it allows us to not understand ourselves, but to understand each other on a deeper level. We can engage with online arts to connect more deeply with current issues and events, and museums are moving exhibits online, virtual galleries are hosting muse uh, uh, museum show openings and artist talks. And a lot of museums today are working to be more community informed, but they're working within heavy frameworks of their past where you guys are not bound by this, uh, bound by this in digital. Now, historically museums have reinforced inequality in their structure and tradition of exclusivity in the way that they objectify other cultures uh, with unjustly collected artworks and there's Many museums that are working to kind of overcome their past and repatriate and create self-aware programming and reinterpret and recontextualize a lot of their collections. But with the internet at our fingertips, gaining access to art made by historically unrepresented voices and thoughtful museums is more important than ever. And artists are rising to the occasion with art projects centered in the themes of coronavirus and quarantine. Uh, I mean, I'm sure everybody has seen uh, Banksy's recent works. Right? Banksy typically creates kind of like large scale public artworks and his work from home scene shows uh, uh, this uh, rats going crazy in his real life apartment, uh, complete with his mirror that was kind of uh, askew and they're treadmilling on toilet paper rolls and swinging from the hand towels and all these things. And even uh, the Icelandic Danish artist, which has become quite popular uh, recently, Olaf for Eliasen, who uh, last December transported 30 icebergs from Greenland fjords to the doors of London's Tate Modern, uh, if it needed any uh, more emphasizing, uh, you know, towards the urgent threat of climate change. But all of this is symbolic of what we've witnessed through time. And if you look at any great traumatizing event of the past, world wars, global emergencies of different kinds, and artists have always responded. After the First World War, it was Dada and surrealism. After the second, it was existentialism and gestural abstraction. And what you as artists are creating and will continue to create upon reflection of this will be the next fascinating phase of perhaps what will be known as post-COVID art. The rest of society can build reactive mechanisms to cope with crisis in the future, but artists, unlike the rest, are not responsive catalysts to change, but visual visualize change before it happens. They are, well, you are, resilient, 
as history has demonstrated, and are central tenets for the reimagination of how stories are told in the experiential sense. And this will never change. And I'm very much looking forward uh, to seeing all of your artworks today. And thank you very, very much. Thank you, Rana. It's uh, great insights. Uh, and, uh, you know, you almost touched everything. Uh, you know, we all uh, here, I'm sure, uh, are always response, uh, you know, whatever the kind of pandemics we see it or global, you know, um, kind of situations, you know, artists are the form of expressions. It's come and give us uh, a lot of motivation to the world. So I take this uh, again uh, opportunity to thank you for uh, being uh, joining us today. And now I'll go back to our uh, next guest. Mr. Parvez uh, Rasool, um, he is uh, a portrait artist, uh, born and raised in Pakistan, and he almost spent 14 years uh, in USA. And he holds a master's degree uh, in fine arts uh, from the Maryland Institute uh, in art of uh, in, in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. And he is uh, specialized uh, in doing portraits. Uh, he done a lot of portraits to uh, private collections and to government, uh, corporate and government offices. You know, such as uh, his works are displayed in the White House, Washington DC, in Department of Defense, uh, um, USA, and also the University of North Carolina, Pakistan Army. And, you know, he mainly, currently he's living in UAE and doing portraits of uh, royal families uh, um, here in the UAE, and also the historians of the, you know, involved with the UAE history. He's been a, a great artist and a veteran in this field, and his works are really amazing. Uh, now. I will ask uh, Mr. Uh, Parvez uh, to say a few words, sir. Hello, can Hi. you hear me? Yes, uh, good, good afternoon, Parvez Sab. <laughs> you here. Good afternoon to you all and all the listeners. Um, I'm so glad to be talking to such nice speakers, but um, as an artist, um, I'm not very good at, uh, uh, of a speech maker. I mean, I'm, uh, I'll try. I'm uh, an artist uh, and a portrait painter, and I specialize in portraiture of uh, the royal families of this country at this point. I mean, uh, when I was in USA doing my masters, I did some abstract work also. And um, it was a great coincidence that, uh, you know, we met uh, each other and um, um, made some acquaintance with, uh, Art Smiley. I mean, it's uh, it's a great portal for uh, uh, between between artists and art lovers. It's uh, it's uh, like a gateway between arts uh, artists and art lovers. So that's a very fortunate thing that happened to me. Uh, I benefited that from, uh, from that also, and um, I. Um, admire this uh, exhibition, this ex effort that uh, they have put together and, um, uh, and the title tells it all, uh, uh, um, uh, alone, we are alone, but uh, together. I mean, that's, uh, that, that says a lot. During this pandemic, people are isolated in their homes and uh, they're keeping social distancing and everything. So uh, we need to communicate. And there's all the more need for communication right now and new ideas of communication through art. And um, art is a language, it, it, is, it is the oldest language for human beings. Uh, cave paintings are a proof of that. Uh, and it's, it's the best mode of communication. So Art Smiley is bringing us together and letting us uh, communicate with each other and uh, the world at large. I was uh, very impressed and uh, very happy to hear this young lady speak from USA. And she was very fluent and very articulate and very, uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, what can I say? <laughs> A very good speaker. Anyway, um, I want to just uh, uh, say a few words about uh, uh, about uh, the need for communication at this time during this uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic, um, and uh, especially the role of artists, uh, because a, a picture can paint a thousand words, 
you can you can say a lot through a picture or a photograph or a sculpture during the during these uh, so called boring days there is always uh, more need all the more need for uh, new ideas and their expressions uh, and uh, there are so many varieties of issues and emotions emanating from them um this uh, hello hello i've lost uh, the picture no 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 yeah yeah we we'll just continue continue okay can you see me no your video is not on mr masood sir can you switch on the video uh i have to switch on the video also yes please click on start video this is my first time on zoom so you know yeah it's okay if you can't respond on the video it's okay no problem you can talk no problem okay i should continue talking and uh, i mean it doesn't really matter sure, sure. go on go on parvez sir okay um i was saying that uh, during these uh, these boring days uh, for for some people they are boring days but there uh, there are so many things that are going on um and um uh, and uh, so much going on and there are so many varieties of emotions and emanating from them like joy sorrow love passion uh your pride and uh, your prejudice uh, affection your anger fear desire and despair uh, empathy and uh, your excitement about many things uh, that ha are happening to you your grief and your happiness and so much more so anyone getting bored these days is not paying attention if you just pay attention to all these feelings and uh, seek out some subjects in your mind and uh, try to capture them you will become a good artist and uh, well that's one one criterion but uh, there there are others also but uh, in these days uh, it's all the more uh, necessary for every artist to be more sensitive to their feelings and their emotions um interaction is not that much important right now but uh, uh, the thinking process of an artist is very very important and um abstract art uh, as uh, art smiley particularly pays attention to um uh, abstract art uh, is um, a mode of expression uh, a, a very good free mode of expression when i did my masters in usa i did um, a series of paintings uh, for my thesis it was about the stream of consciousness and uh, i got my degree from there and um, you know um, it was it was a very refreshing and very um, enlightening experience for me um so i would i would like to encourage these artists who are listening to me that uh, abstract art and expression uh, abstract expression especially is uh, is 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 a very um uh, rich experience so um i would i would like to say it, uh, that uh, they should uh, um they should express themselves through color form composition or just make the world wonder through your art about uh, their own feelings okay your portfolio shows the world what you are keep a good portfolio keep a good web presence seek help from uh, art marketing portals like art smiley and above all just keep smiling okay thank you <laughs> thank you so much for your nice words thank you so much <laughs> okay Thank you, Mr. Baba. Very fine words and uh, you know some tips to the artists. I'm sure uh, you know they will uh, learn something from it. You know, mixing uh, portrait into abstracts and expressions. Uh, it's a it's a great suggestion. And thank you for uh, uh, being joining us as well. Okay, now we will be.
presenting about our uh, artists. Um, yes. Yeah, we have, as uh, previously um, you know, mentioned, we have 27 artists par participating from over 16 uh, countries. We will have our uh, first artist, Mr. Anjani Prakash Laitu. He is an uh, UAE-based uh, Indian artist. Um, he's been, in, uh, you know, pick up his uh, brush around the age of uh, 60. Today, he is 78 years old. Uh, he has an amazing passion. Uh, I can't express myself whenever I meet him. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm regenerated, uh, you know, completely. You know, his colors, uh, you know, reflects on his, uh, you know, sh on his shirts and, uh, you know, whatever he do. Uh, it, you know, it's all about the spreading the happiness. Uh, you know, he's been inspired uh, artists from the Hussein's paintings and uh, he's been, um, you know, uh, been in art world uh, and everybody knows in UAE, he's been doing uh, work for many years. Uh, uh, in fact, I would say it's a great person uh, to be inviting into our platform. And I'm now passing the, you know, to Mr. Anjani Prakash Laitu, he's going to present his artworks. Uh, Anjani ji, just, uh, yeah, I'm there. Yes, uh, good to hear you. <laughs> Mr. Anjaniji, now you can take over the stage to talk about uh, your paintings uh, and uh, you express yourself. Uh, you know, that'll be the best way to... You know, Thank you very much. I'm smiling, but I don't have much to talk about myself. <laughs> I, I only keep painting for my pleasure and to keep people happy by showing my work to masses, that's all. I, I am in UAE for last, uh, say, 25 years. And five years I worked for something for which I came to as a corporate person. And after that, I started uh, my painting. That was continuation of the beginning. And I did a, a small three years course from Charger Attitude after my assignment with the Al Tajir glass, and they gave me a direction for doing abstract. Earlier, I was doing more of textile. That was my hobby and my passion. But uh, working with the uh, institute for three years and with good masters, I got a direction for working on canvases. And now I am doing canvas nearly two canvas every week. I do. And my most of mostly my size is 70 to 75 centimeter square. And I, I do a lot of colors I use because they keep me happy and I want to pass this happiness to the masses. And I'm grateful for uh, smiling people. They have done wonderful, they are doing a lot of work in spreading art. And every time I go for putting one or two of my works there, and I find a lot of new artists, those who are getting encouraged by, by this platform. They are doing very well. And uh, I will try to, as directed, I will try to show some of my work, which is not very classical or say master, but it's, still, it's my hobby. You can see the work here. Yes, Anjani we can see your work. Please go on. It's great to see. This is my type of work. Yeah, lots of colors as always you love, you know. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful work, Sanjini. Wonderful. Can you talk a little bit brief about them? 
Um, I just I just call them colors, and I don't relate them with anything. I will not like to relate anything with worldly name or worldly things. It is just my spreading color and getting enjoyment out of it. I don't call any painting. I don't name them. I call all my paintings that color. Yeah, different forms of expression uh, by every artist. Uh, I'm sure I know about you very well. As I said, uh, it's all about colors and spreading the happiness with the works. So. Yeah. For those who may not be knowing, actually, Anjani Ji is actually also do a lot of textile. Uh, you know, it works us. You know put into the textile like in the you know different forms of clothing and everything designs are being used in a wide very vividly everywhere yeah that's uh, that's great uh, very nice big master sir they are already i am just doing them hope they will like it and encourage me Sure. I mean, uh, you know, the passion uh, you always have uh, is as amazing as I said, uh, you know, irrespective, you're, you're, you're always like uh, more than passionate than any younger person here uh, in doing your work. So that's a great, uh, great thing. And you keep continuing this passion. Great works, I mean, uh, great works. Continue or no, I think we must give chance to other people also. There must yes, be people thank you. Thank you so much, Anjali Ji. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. God bless you, and I'm hope. Thank you for, for to uh, Mr. Alam, Mr. Rana Ji, and Mr. Masood. I think they will they will guide me for some some tips. Sure. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, Anjani Ji. Thank you. Yeah, our next uh, artist uh, um, is Ayat Al Hazi. Is UAE based uh, British Syrian artist. She did a BA in uh, visual uh, art and MA art in uh, politics. Uh, you know, she been uh, a fashion design and painting on fabrics. She worked in various uh, multimedia projects and participated in many exhibitions in uh, Europe and Syria and UAE. So the artworks are part of ongoing series of paintings called Wishes. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, the works presented by her thoughts and feelings at difficult time. So this is a uh, uh, you know her inner feelings that expresses through art. So now I'm passing the stage to uh, Miss Ayat to talk about her works. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes Ayat. Yes, Ayat. We can hear. Oh, hi, thank you so much for this opportunity to showcase my work and uh, for the introduction. Um, yes. So um, well, actually, I I really like the theme of the work of the of your exhibition. Uh, that we're alone, but together. And, and actually, um, it's, it's this uh, social life, something that we miss great, we missed it greatly during the, you know, the lockdown and uh, the, I mean, the pandemic. And I mean, what's anything without, without people? Uh, celebration, uh, you know, uh, anything in life, it's like living alone is something uh, nobody wishes. Uh, but of course, we, we had to do it um, through this difficult time uh, to kind of avoid, uh, you know, getting the disease or, or passing it to others. And, and my work during this, this period of time, uh, it's been like con concentrated on social life and on uh, what we missed and what we had for granted. Um, so basically, um, one of my works, for example, I don't know if you can see, uh, sorry, I could not you know, hang them because I am in a, uh, I mean, where I am in a So one of these, I'm, I will talk about celebration and, um, and all I could imagine is uh, people's faces because we had a few occasions that we were just alone as a family. And, um, and it's like we, we had to do this because uh, hoping that this will end at some time and then we'll, we'll have, you know, we'll be back and normal and, and see, see our friends and, and loved ones. So uh, basically it's, I mean, it's a landscape, but I could only see it as like lots of people gathering, whether it's a concert or any um, occasion. And, and it's like a mirage 
of you know that's been obs obsessed about you know gatherings and 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 seeing people again like the normal times uh so it's it's um you know having to 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 kind of stay away and stay away from everybody and it's it's it was a, a really difficult but of course um when we we think of connections and we think of the internet and how it it helped uh kind of uh seeing other people or, or and contacting them and um, and actually uh, kind of helping and supporting each other in this difficult time through the net. It was one of the most uh, helpful things that we had at this time. And what about the virtual, you know, uh, exhibitions? It was, you know, people were active in these virtual exhibitions so we could see each other's work and how much each, every every artist could like participate in um, in show within awareness, spreading awareness, um, uh, kind of the support. I mean, uh, uh, Rana, Miss Rana uh, talked about the support artists uh, gave to each other and to the world uh, through their art, whether it's drawing masks or whatever, on statues or whatever. And uh, and it was really great to see that movement, strong movement, uh, in in you know virtual ones. Uh, and and hopefully uh, everyone is fine and safe and that everything will get back to normality uh, sometime soon hopefully thank you so much for this for this opportunity thank you yeah thank, thank you me. i uh, appreciate it it's uh, it's very nice words i can see a lot of detail uh, you know and it is i'm sure you, I, how much passionate you are thank you thank you very much it's a lot of pleasure So next artist uh, we're presenting uh, Komal Hira, a visual artist from Lahore, Pakistan, graduated uh, from Punjab University College of Art and Design. You know, she has a lot of inspiration from uh, real heroes of our lives and uh, that's how you know, she put together into art form. <clears throat> As she displays the you know, distinction between human and humanity, this is an applaud to togetherness because now we are in the hands of togetherness. So she put uh, some good paintings on her inspiration. And now I'm uh, passing the call to uh, Ms. Komala to present her works. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Komal, we can hear you, yes. Oh, thank you so much for this uh, great opportunity. Uh, I'm a visual artist, works in oil paints, but uh, also love to do pastels, watercolors, and acrylics. My work most always has a reference to a uh, terrestrial uh, technique, but it is changing. As you can see, this the color is not so fleshy and vivid. Anyways, uh, this painting shows that how people stand by each other and serve humanity as much as they can. As the world goes into the lockdown to, store, uh, to slow the spread of COVID-19, many are volunteering their time and resources and risking exposure to the potentially deadly virus to help those who are most in need. From making a mask to delivering food, we are helping those in need during the coronavirus outbreak. Shoulder to shoulder, but keeping it, uh, keeping it a distance, we all march. Some are staying at their duties for months and some by staying inside their homes. We proved ourselves rather than telling the world this time that each and every one of us is unique in their own way. Cheers to the one in white scrubs like doctors, the blues on the streets, policemen, the candy shades of brains behind the screens, and all of us who remained at home and serving humanity. Lord, how connected we all are. This is a display of the distinction between human and humanity. Uh, hand in hand, virtually we stood and battled and made each other more grounded in the light of the fact that punishing it requires harmony. In the face of global pandemic, we are standing together more than ever. This is what I have tried to convey my vision of being alone, but together. Thank you to Komala. She done a brilliant work and uh, expressing, uh, you know, our frontline uh, workers, uh, all the people from all the departments who are frontline fighting uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I salute uh, all these frontline uh, people and also to Komala, especially putting, bringing this kind of work uh, and, uh, uh, you know, showcasing it to us. Now I talk about uh, Renu Shivam. She's an Indian artist 
based out in Dubai. She's presenting the painting titled The Isol Man. When the whole world is living in isolation and facing challenges, she created this art piece, uh, which represents surrender. Now I'll, I will uh, pass the call to Renu Shivam. She talk about her work. Uh, my name is Renu Shivam, and I'm an Indian artist based in Dubai. Uh, I would like to share my recent work with all of you. The title of this painting is Isolment, uh, which is a French name of isolation. Uh, I have created this piece when the whole world is living in isolation and facing challenges. As you all know, in last uh, few months, the Rona virus has taught us the meaning of life and its purpose uh, and reminded us what we are. So during this pandemic, I realized one thing clearly that uh, as uh, people stay apart, the world is coming together. And we are in isolation, feel more and more connected and united. My this painting represents surrender. Because when we pray, we can hand over our concern, our worries, our fear to God. And prayer affirms that the Creator is present, present and all seeing and care for all of us. In this particular painting, I have used mainly black and gray colors in Buddha to show dullness depression and loss. As you can see, at the same time, I used bright orange color in the clothes of monk, which symbolize creativity, hope, positivity, and enthusiasm. I feel that uh, art makes people optimistic about their future. So my painting is a ray of hope in this current difficult situation. I would like to say a big thanks to Art Smiley for providing us this platform to express our feeling on canvas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Renu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Renu. As I said, it's a, a great work too. Um, in this, it represents what, what state we are in, and it's, it's about uh, Buddha. I love it uh, personally. It's a great piece. I have many pieces in my work in my home also. I personally admire. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So our next. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think our uh, next artist is Aminika. She's from Bahrain. Uh, um, you know, she's a self-taught artist. She you know, pursued her love for art, exploring the strength and colors of utilizing different techniques. Uh, she do a lot of abstract paintings. And, uh, you know, she herself uh, has a lot of passion. I personally met in Bahrain too. And, uh, you know, she, she been, uh, um, but has you know, been with us for a long time and showcasing many of her works in the region. So I think she is not here today. Um, was not sure. I mean, these are some of her works. Uh, um, again, there's a lot of in detail, abstracts, and uh, she do uh, more passion about uh, what's going on her, you know, around and put them into uh, real life pictures. Uh, you know, she talks a lot and she's a very passionate artist. Uh, okay, we go into next uh, our artist. Mr. Kaushal Chaudhary, an Indian artist living in Mumbai, and he's also an art director for Indian cinema. His the theme of his paintings or sculptures or installation is mainly associated to the soul, heart, and mind, which he expresses in abstract and figurative forms. He's a first-class graduate engineer from Bangalore University, a sculptor from Indian Institute of Craft and Design in Jaipur. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Kaushal Chaudhary, an artist from Mumbai. India and I'm thankful to Gallery Art Smiley Dubai for showing my work and I like the theme which boosted me to participate in it. We're all alone but together. So it's very very nice feeling behind it. The entire uh, world has come together to fight with the corona thing and the artist uh, especially like we are from different countries and uh, we're showing our work together being separate from our different studios and um, places in the country, different countries. And we're showing together. It's a nice thing. And I'm showing my these works behind me. I called it mind connection. The idea behind it was like if you're connected with your mind and you get connected with everybody. So, and it's not that easy uh, to get connected. It's not difficult as well. But you see, there's so many things that keeps coming in your mind at a time. So that's what I have shown. I have used oil and acrylic uh, as my medium on canvas. And uh, 
It's a beautiful painting. I feel it because it presents my mind. And the other is this emergent, this which I painted during this lockdown period. And uh, it's about the, like like right, right now we are showing all of us are showing together. So the entire world becomes one. We are all connected. So that's the idea. And once we are connected with the mind, the soul, and then we get connected with their planet. So it's like uh, the entire universe get connected. So this is what uh, about my show. I wish uh, all the artists, the participating artists, good luck. I wish Arunaji good luck for the show. Thank you. Some of his works are these uh, very great uh, uh, works. I can see there again, beautiful uh, work. Out, uh, now our, uh, I introduce to Deepa Singh Beniwal. Uh, she is also an Indian artist based in United States. She is a modern imp impressionistic artist who specializes in the use of acrylic and oil paintings. She has been completed a master's of fine arts in the same field. The unique aspects of Deepa's art pieces is the use of uh, vibrant saturated colors and different forms of scenery, landscapes, culture, and in some cases by using people as a main subject. Uh, and candid positions. Miss Deepa, I'm passing the call to you to showcase your work, sir. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yes, Miss hey, Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> so I'm doing this first time, so I'm a bit nervous. So We're all, uh, we're all, don't worry. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm, I'm showing my artwork. So uh, can you see this painting? Yes, yes, we can. Go on. So this is my painting. Uh, so um, I have portrayed that face in that and these are checks. So uh, they are symbolizing that uh, in women life, most of the decisions are uh, families and uh, friends and others. Sorry, not friends, but family take, uh, take the decisions. So this painting is uh, based on that. So black and white. And this is pan painting. Uh, I have drawn this uh, painting by ballpoint pen. So this is uh, portraying the women's life. These these flowers, petals. Uh, this is symbolizing the women's life and their faces. So I'm a bit nervous. I don't know what I'm saying, Carry but on. I'm fine. Okay. Carry on. Don't worry. So this is my next painting. Uh, this is this is also with uh, same. Uh, media this is also pen paint, um, painting okay they are fine now this is my next painting uh, uh, this is a uh, mixed media painting so this is portraying the two hearts when we fall in love with someone we see everything beautiful around us This is a painting of Lord Buddha. So, Lord Buddha symbolizes the peace. And these are my other uh, work. So, I painted this painting when my when I was in India and my husband was in America. So, I was waiting for my visa things to be done so when i draw this painting great work guys so a lot of expressionism from your heart feelings sir, into work uh, this is uh, this is also one of my work very good works these are my portrait work so this is kind of poster portrait work this is a painting of Lord Buddha, teenager. Oh, sorry, Krishna. This is all I have. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, so Deepa. Much. Yeah, I love work, especially this, uh, you know, expressing a woman's life uh, in day to day. You know, you're right. Uh, women has been uh, influenced, uh, but we want women empowerment. A lot of men, I mean, like me, <laughs> we're all coming from families. You know, there's a lot of influence, and that you're reflecting in your works. Uh, 
it's a, it's a great, great thank moment. you thank you for giving us this platform thank you so much thank you pleasure Deepa. our next artist mr jamil estasia uh, dubai he's a dubai based uh, palestinian artist graduated in fine arts uh, he also have a ba in uh, interior designing he highlights many subjects uh, through his paintings including human expressions and futures the whole historical arab cities uh, many of his works are reflecting some of the old houses that are, he placed in the you know is is actually inspired by the palestinian and the historic history of the palestinian and he portrayed into pictures of you know his you know culture heritage that's all representing uh, his works uh, these are some of his uh, artworks you know he's uh, been showcasing with us uh, i think he's not in the platform uh, um probably we can go to the next artist we'll be talking about uh, yulia um yulia solomania she's a dubai based artist from belarus she works uh, mainly in the style of abstract decorative painting working in acrylic colors on canvas she's presenting the artwork named uh, almera dancing inspired her to create this work so now i'm passing to yulia to talk about her work hi yulia hello this they can me Yes, yes, we can see. Hello, my name is Yulia Salomina. I'm uh, I'm an artist. I'm from Belarus. Now I'm based in Dubai, UAE. I'm um, I'm like uh, to work with the uh, color. I want to present uh, uh, present my my work. I want to talk about it. Um, I I love I I have hobby. I love to dance. uh dance uh, spirit me into create uh, to this work i called i called it elemanda um uh, the painting the pics uh, of era uh, era of renaissance cavalier in words and um, with the dama to dance a dance about emotion patience elements thank you so much thank you julia really appreciate it a good work thank you thank you This is Yulia's work as she showcased now. Yeah, we'll be talking about uh, Mrs. Hanwar Hadadin. Uh, she is an artist from uh, Jordan. You know, she's currently staying in UAE, and her artwork is a series of paintings created with a fluid art technique. It's a style that depicts her fascination with the colors and the nature and sea water. With her experience, she acquired unique works that represent. an intersection between random flow and deliberate brush strokes as two pieces are not the same again she been uh, working with us uh, with art smiley for a long time uh, we, we've been uh, you know in many exhibitions and also she's working on uh, art classes and many other stuff with us uh, so now i pass the call to anwar hadadin uh, she yes. can showcase her work hello anwar yeah hi how are you and uh, good good evening for all of you and thank you for give us uh, this uh, time to uh, um, talk about our uh, painting so uh, i will start this um, uh, painting um uh, this call uh, petra sand uh, i because from i am from jordan and it is a petra a pink city in the jordan so i uh, my passion or my um, uh, vision about the sand for the petra so i feeling uh, some uh, sense about that uh, sand so i draw this uh, picture uh, this mix, mixed media uh, with the uh, textures i used a uh, um, knife uh, palette and uh, spray paint so um, Uh, this is i feeling about the sand how it is and the, the gold paint of, uh, about the sun how it is come reflection with this sand and this pink uh, and orange uh, green for the rocks for um, uh, how it is that reflection sun to the sand and this is a pink uh, city on jordan it means um, uh, petra so i think they all need, know about the uh, petra this is my painting for uh, petra and the other one uh, i call it it uh, uh, energy uh, emotional emotional energy i uh, think about that uh, the time for this uh, pandemic uh, time 
I want to um, paint something, give us and give how is look the, the painting, the energy and um, uh, warm uh, feeling and something. So I draw that. Um, um, I don't know. It's uh, clear. Okay. That the orange with the uh, green and also I use a palette knife and uh, uh, spray paint is a mixed media. Um, so I feeling this my feeling what in this time energy and the positive things and um, some uh, warm sense and that when I feeling something about this time I draw this painting. Thank you so much. Uh, for all of you and uh, for a special thanks for Art Smiley to give us this time. Thank you and have a nice day for all of you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, these are the works she just showcased. Yeah, and now we'll be talking about uh, Ms. Hazaria Nasir. She's an abstract artist and educator. She has a master's degree in education and bachelor's degree in business administration. She is passionate about teaching and painting. She paints using acrylics on canvas and her tools consist of various kinds of palette knives and brushes. Every person who views abstract art will have their own perspective and feeling. You know, we're all, in, we're all the same yet so different. You know, this is uh, our expression of uh, art forms. And now she'll be showcasing her works. Uh, just, yeah, these are the kind of works she made. She now I'll pass the call to Hazaria. Hello. Yes, Hazaria, yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Art Smiley for giving us this fantastic opportunity. Um, it's lovely to see all of you here today. And thank you to both of the guests of honors as well. Um, so basically, I paint mainly in abstract, and I feel like abstract art really allows you to express your emotions in form of design, color, and texture. Uh, the two paintings which I'm exhibiting today are, one of them is called The End of Era, and it's about facing your difficult uh, part of your life, and it's about ending that, uh, that difficult chapter of your life. Um, the red represents the pain and the black represents the closure. And uh, I think during the coronavirus time, we've been all having, we're facing challenges, we are facing ourselves, but I think we're going to get through this. Um, the second painting, which I am uh, exhibiting today is called The Beauty of Faith. And I feel like if all of us um, can just stay um, on this and you know, believe in ourselves, we will get through this. And if you can see, the colors are moving from one side to the other, and I think everything flows. So even this time is going to pass away, and everything is going to be back to normal or a better life for all of us. So thank you. Thank you to Art Smarty again for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hazira. Thank you, Hazira. It's a great work. Again, a great way to expression currently what we are going through in our lives. Thank you. Moving forward to the next so now we will be presenting uh, Mr. Evan was born in 1985 in uh, Wisbech, Belarus. Uh, his signature style is driven by circles, which represents universes, characters, lives, and space dimensions. In the paintings, he brings to life the brightest images from his imagination and vision of the world's beauty and supreme meaning of it. Now I'll pass the call to Ms. Rivan to present his works. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, Hi, nice uh, nice uh, hearing from you and uh, nice also to see beautiful arts from previous artists. So I'm Belarusian and that was the artist before also from my country. Uh, so I work with the abstract figurative uh, art and I blend it with the suprematism. The, uh, in, in our city in Vitebsk, there are two famous artists that uh, one Kazimir Malevich and another is uh, um, Mark Chagall. So they were working and creating arts in our city. So actually I'm inspired by Kazimir Malevich and his movement of uh, suprematism, where he were focusing mostly on uh, figurative arts and objects like circles, 
uh, like lines, uh, triangles, and he said that those are the objects. Uh, this represent uh, the primordial nature of the like of the actually environment before they form something solid and something that you can define. So actually, uh, this is my current collection called Circles of Life, which is blend of abstract, figurative, and suprematism. Uh, then the collection, uh, the exhibition that we're having, uh, we are alone, but together, I think that this painting that I have here with me, it calls harmonic conversion, represents this idea the best, where on a chaotic background of movements, there is the order of the circles. Uh, so I've chose this collection. Uh, there are like currently 10 artworks in the circles collection. Uh, one of the collection, one of the painting from this collection been chosen by uh, Sharjah Museums for the exhibition. Uh, so, but this one, so I believe represents the idea of the current exhibition with the art smiley the best. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, it's uh, again uh, very great work, very much detail, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know we love it. Thank you, uh, thanks, Ivan. Welcome. Okay, uh, now I'll be introducing uh, Mr. Khaled Altaba. Um, Khaled was born in Syria in 1978 uh, in an Arslava family. His father was an artist specialized in uh, Arabic and the nature of his village was so attractive to make him a very talented child. He started painting in childhood and uh, from that time he was uh, dreaming the fine art faculty in his lovely country, Syria, to start his art journey. He graduated from the fine arts faculty in 2004. Again, I mean, I can see, you know, uh, from his works we can showcase. It's a, a lot of inspiration. I'm, a lot of this, this is one of the great thing I see it uh, across many countries, many artists, uh, because they are inspired by their surroundings, by their country. You know, it has a great impact from the childhood and how they become the uh, uh, great artists in their lives. Uh, Mr. Khalid is not here actually, unfortunately, but I will be presenting our uh, next artist. Uh, Ms. Natalia Vichugova, uh, sorry if I spelled it wrong, your name. Uh, and she's a watercolor artist who is happy to share the beauty and brightness of the world with others. She loves watercolors for their unpredictability and ability to flow and merge and form magical color combinations. She paints landscapes, floral compositions and portraits and illustrates short stories and poems. Now I'll be passing the call to Mrs. Natalia, Ms. Natalia, to talk about her work, sir. Hi, good Hi. afternoon, everyone. So, can you Hi, hear me? No? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So, I'm very happy to be part of this beautiful exhibition, this presentation of this group of artists, because actually I'm feeling so choked. I'm not a professional artist. I'm a teacher, yeah, I have a master's degree in literature and education. But, you know, since I was a little child, I was fascinated by colors, by textures, by shapes, you know. And I was trained as a professional musician, as a piano player and a pianist, you know. So every time I played a piece of music, it's actually like funny. I couldn't hear notes. I could, obviously, but at the same time, I could see colors and pictures. And, you know, my teacher was wise enough to let me paint, you know, express myself, not just through music, through notes, but also through images. Okay, now I teach literature in high school. I teach A-levels. So like my students are also trying to understand this world, not only through the words, but also through the images. You know, I'm trying to combine these two beautiful arts, art of the world and art of, you know, the color. So uh, I'm really into watercolors. I try different media, you know, acrylics, oil, pencils, you know, but in my opinion, watercolors can really, really convey, you know, my ideas and my perception of the world, especially during this pandemic, you know, when we were all locked in our tiny flats, like in my situation, I live in a tiny flat, you know, I couldn't see the light because we don't have so many windows here. So my idea was to kind of cheer myself up, to cheer my friends up, my students, you know, my colleagues, through art, through my expression, through my vision. 
So I started painting more than ever. Like I've been painting all my life, but during this pandemic, it was like, you know, it has come to a climax. I was painting every single night. And you know, I'll start presenting my paintings that are going to be exhibited. Uh, so the first one, I hope you can see it here, is a watercolor of Amsterdam. Again, it's one of my beautiful places in the world. But as you can see in these paintings, the colors are exaggerated, yeah? And I did it on purpose. So probably in real life, the buildings are not that bright. And even the tulips are maybe more subtle, more subdued. But I wanted the painting to look that bright, that vivid, you know, lively. To kind of, you know, show my acceptance of this world, to show my happiness that no matter what is going on around me, I'm still a happy and fulfilled person. Okay, so the second painting that is going to be exhibited is also a cityscape, but in this case, it's Vienna. Maybe some of you can recognize the street, you know? Again, one of my favorite places in the world. So beautiful, so classic, right? Uh, so here I just painted a tram, you know, a quiet street. And again, look, it's called the rainy day in Vienna. Maybe it's just my nostalgic kind of feeling because here in Dubai, it's very hot, you know, most of the time. And we all miss this rainy weather. So here is the piece. All right, so let's go on. Here I have two floral compositions. One is titled The Sunny Sunflowers. Again, it's just, you know, the expression of my mood because I believe I'm quite a positive person, you know, like in any situation I try to see the silver lining because that's how I go on. So this painting represents me, I would say so. That's how I feel, that's how I think, and that's who I am. Sunny sunflowers, trying to make people around me a little bit happier. All right, so here, I hope you're not bored with my presentation yet. So I have Another floral. No, not at all, not at all, border. Please, we are okay. how to do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like when you let me talk, I talk. No, no so, problem. Yeah, thank you. So here we have like another floral, as I said, like painting, yeah? But it's different. Like the mood is different, the atmosphere is different, even the color palette is different, yeah? Here I have peonies. Peonies are my favorite, favorite, favorite flowers because, you know, like, since ancient times, they've been known to humanity as flowers of, you know, prosperity, beauty, wealth, and also they're very, very fortunate for women, you know? So if a woman gets this painting and hangs it on the wall, like really, 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 it's a good symbol. So you see the colors are absolutely different from the sunny sunflowers. Okay, and now the last two paintings that I want to present a portrait because as you see I'm trying like my stuff in different genres so here we are portrait paintings this one was inspired actually by a photo that I saw somewhere online maybe on Pinterest of course it's not a replica but you know I saw like an African woman laughing her head off and I thought like yes that's what I need to paint that's what is going to bring a little bit of happiness to our life and I think like, you know, the colors are so vibrant, so happy, so nice. So I don't know, like it's one of my favorite paintings painted by myself. So an African woman, an African queen. And the last painting is a little bit different. And it's my tribute to local culture, because as I said, I live in the UAE, in Dubai, and I've, I've been living here since 1997. So for over 20 years. And of course, I have a lot of Arab students and I admire their culture and I'm married to an Arab man. So, of course, like I'm fascinated by Arab food, you know, traditions and obviously garments, you know, especially clothes. And, you know, once I was in a lift with a very beautiful Arabic woman and only her eyes were visible, you know, and I was fascinated just by the depth of the eyes. And this painting kind of represents my fascination with all Arab. It's called the eyes of Arabia. So that's all. And thank you so, so much for giving me this chance to be part of this beautiful event. Thank you, Art Smiley, and thank you all my fellow artists.
for listening thank to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. As we can see that uh, you have different uh, forms of painting. I love your floral paintings and the cultural, you know, realistic, you know, from African to UAE, everything. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. Thank you, Natalia. So we have, we're going to be presenting uh, Miss um, Nada Al-Hashmi. She's an Iraqi artist, has been raised in UAE, took many courses in different types of arts, uh, participated and organized more than 20 art exhibitions in different regions. Most of her works are done using a special technique with art knives, create abstract painting. Her aim is to spread positivity through the colors of her works. These are uh, some of her uh, works we will be showcasing. Uh, yeah, here is our, uh, you know, painting, which uh, she was planning to showcase it here. I think uh, she's not in online. Uh, we'll be moving into the next artist. It's Deepankar Ghosh. Um, he's an uh, artist from India, uses uh, watercolor uh, as his form. He's a, the environment of seaside of West Bengal and the God of Ganga River uh, have been fascinating for him and reflected in his work. Many boats are waiting for next destination. Various impressions, different images and endless sensations have made their ways through the strokes of watercolor on paper. So, you know, some of you may know probably he's been inspired uh, by him again. A lot of the artists, I see it and I hear all this, he's been uh, inspired and fascinated by around his, uh, you know, West Bengal, it's a lot of heritage culture and the Ganga, you know, so I, I can see from his words and you can see his works uh, all been reflecting uh, uh, the Ganges and, uh, you know, the surrounding areas, how it's been realistically he put together in the art form. We are alone, but together. The theme is appropriate for this current situation all over the world. I am grateful to participate this exhibition. Hi, I am Dipankar Ghosh from India. I am enjoying my work with water-based medium on paper. The environment of seaside, West Bengal and the ghats of Ganga River have been less fascinating for me and reflected my work. I hope my work simply touching your heart. Thanks to artsmiley.com arrange for this nice exhibition in Dubai. We'll be introducing Dr. Ajit Gadekar. Uh, he's a pediatrist, uh, pediatrician by profession. The beauty of, again, uh, he has passionate about his art and, uh, you know, he carrying uh, his paintbrush and, you know, keep uh, moving along with other profession. The beauty of nature is mesmerizing and makes him forget uh, work stress. This painting is created uh, by him during the home isolation. Being frontline healthcare worker, workload uh, at hospital, fear of well-being of family and perceptions regarding pandemic. These are all factors uh, contributed to uh, stigmatization. So painting is a therapy for him to get relief these fears and stress. Uh, I completely Actually, he's, agree. He's not available, so his wife will showcase yeah. his work. That she okay. Oh. We'll pass on to her. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is Megha Gadekar. Uh, I'm representing Ajit Gadekar as he has some work commitments at hospital. So today I'm going to represent him. Yeah, uh, capturing beauty through landscape is his hobby and it's not his profession, but yes. And it works as a therapy for him to relieve from the stress of, and workload. Now, um, today we are exhibiting his, two of his paintings. Uh, the first one is Autumn, that is a hope, that is hope for new beginning. The first painting is Autumn, the hope for new beginning. This painting was created during uh, the month of uh, June 2020. Uh, you all know that that was a time when pandemic was at its peak in the, the region. So facing all that fear and of uh, COVID pandemic and uh, facing lockdown situation, all these things uh, contributed in fear of everybody. So he thought of uh, paint something that is refreshing, that refreshes uh, uh, one's mind and give hope to everyone that this is all going to end and there will be a new beginning. So he painted autumn and autumn makes the transition 
from summer to winter likewise the fear of pandemic will be over and there will be a new beginning with this hope autumn is painted in this painting the bright and beautiful colors of trees will make you feel that the life is beautiful and colorful whatever be be the situation so no no lockdown will stop you from enjoying beauty of mother nature through art so this is a beautiful uh, beginning ahead with this hope this painting has been created by him the other painting i'm going to present is of lake view so this is the painting sorry sorry for the delay the second painting okay. is a lake view this is an oil painting and created recently in august 2020 so sitting the idea is that sitting quietly in the corner of a lake you one can feel uh, serenity of lake and still water one can smell a refreshing fragrance of the wild flowers and grass the great depth of lake provides a sense of calmness and still water acts as a mirror reflecting the great blue sky this is how the hope of new beginning and the peaceful mind will make it true that even if we are alone we are together and this is all about his paintings and yeah really these are uh, he loves to do landscape paintings uh, only and uh, this is all about his work thank you thank you thank you arsmali for giving this opportunity and it was really nice presentation and uh, everything is totally overwhelming thank you very much thank you thank you so much thank you mrs garekar i mean uh, some uh, inspirational words uh, from his what how the doctor expressed as uh, no we are not this is not the end of the world we sure uh, come out of this pandemic uh, and uh, it's nicely nicely been put together thank yeah, you yeah that's true that's true that everybody needs this kind of positivity right now <laughs> that's that's you're absolutely spot on thank you thank you thank you very much thank you now i'll be introducing uh, um Benefisa Lawrence Samra she is an art plastic artist from Algeria she studied law and fine arts she take inspiration from the beauty of nature she like the warm and bright colors that makes us optimistic and happy as a humanist her artwork address addresses to all societies she received a certificate of appreciation from supreme council of arts and literature and the ministry of culture in 2017 now i'll be just uh, showing her uh, works this is her work uh, again uh, it shows uh, the pandemic uh, situation how the kids are affected and around the, the nature and the family so she been beautifully portrayed this work uh, and unfortunately she's not here uh, to present her work so we'll move on to the next painting next artist our next artist uh, uh, fatma mohsin she's an egyptian uh, self taught fine artist born with a great passion uh, for art she has more than 10 years of experience in the field of freelancing artwork and design she is passionate about uh, different types of arts especially like arabic calligraphy islamic geometric designs modern art such as abstract free hand drawing and free fonts of design participated with many art galleries in egypt the uae and many of her artworks has been acquired around the world so i'll be showcasing her works uh, this is her, uh, her abstract painting uh, you know showing different forms of colors and the her inner feelings of the in presenting in the artwork again she's also not here uh, online uh, so we'll be moving into the next artist the next artist uh, we're talking about uh, rishu goshian roy he, he's a passionate artist who believes that colors are uh, the sorry she believes the colors are the passion, best way to spread the joy she loves to capture a moment on canvas and paint it with bright and bold colors that both delight and enchant the viewer her passion to understand different art forms have made her pursue master's degree in both fine arts and history of art she is displaying a couple of her works here in the next page just go on show us next works yeah she, uh, oh. mayura and kanna so she's again inspired uh, from the spiritual uh, uh, you know inspiration his lord krishna and uh, his uh, you know peacock uh, you know we have a lot of uh, 
culture uh, and uh, Hinduism. This, these are uh, beautiful works done by herself. Uh, okay, she's also not here to present her works. Uh, so move to the next person. We're talking uh, next artist, uh, uh, Mrs. Samia Sohrab. Samia Sohrab is an acrylic and oil and mixed media artist uh, based out in uh, UAE. The artist takes the personal ex you know, experiences, stories, struggles, and achievements uh, and translates them into works that express the inner turmoil that comes with each life milestone. The artist's goal is to have, a, have the human experiences documented in artworks of art that can have the universal language. Uh, she is also not available. Sorry, these are her works. Yeah, these are her, some of the works uh, we are uh, showcasing here. Next, the artist we will be introducing Ansam Al Awam. Ansam Al Awam from Syria. She's an artist and uh, art teacher. She participated in several exhibitions inside uh, and outside UAE. She got uh, many certifications and appreciation in her field of work. Art for her is a feeling and a language that does not uh, need to translate. Again, she's also not here, I believe. Uh, so these yes, are yes. some of her works. She created, I think, during the quarantine. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be talking about uh, Blanca Blinks, Chris. She is also, uh, I mean, she's from a Slovenian artist with PhD in cultural studies. She graduated from the College of Design and uh, Photography. In, I don't know the, how to spell it, but yeah, this painting is made of uh, uh, 30 paintings of different art techniques put it in uh, one final painting. This is a result of uh, how each day made an influence on her being locked in the apartment with no social activities. Again, an expression yes. of her feelings during the lockdown into this art. Yes. Yeah, she is not available for some reason. She conveyed her apologies in earlier. So this is her work uh, put together into many of artworks put together in one. 30 paintings together, yeah. Okay. So the next art artist we're going to talk about, uh, Virginia Asago. Virginia, born in Italy, attended the art school of uh, Verona and graduated from there. Passionate about art, she dedicates herself to painting, but also a trip lover in her travel bag, uh, never fail albums, pencils and brushes. In fact, uh, the protagonists of her paintings are nature, humans, animals, and vivid colors that reflect the places and the experiences uh, lived. For her artwork, she uses various techniques, colored oil, watercolor, acrylic, and uh, pyrography. Uh, these, these are, are our works. Uh, yeah, these are the works she is showcasing. And next, Ilona. Yeah, next artist we're introducing Ilona Rebik. Ilona Rebik is a Dutch artist and creating makes her very happy. Her artworks are powered by her cosmopolitan life experiences. All artworks are created in her head, after which she transfer them to canvas, whereby colors and shapes lead to her to a special end result. I'll be asking uh, Ilona to present her works and uh, talk about a few words. Thank you so very much for this opportunity uh, you gave me. Um, I'm so uh, overwhelmed uh, about it. My name is Ilona Riebig. I am Dutch. My artworks are powered by my cosmopolitan life experiences. As an artist uh, standing before my canvas, I bring my experiences and emotions on the canvas and share them with the viewer. So let's go to my first canvas uh, I made. With all the planets, uh, and since we are not alone but together, it's acrylics on canvas. Uh, here on Jupiter, there's a cycling tour going on. Uh, Mars, uh, cars are coming and going. Jupiter is, is rolling. There's a planet with a basket hanging and two people are going somewhere. So, not alone but together. My next painting are those poppies, I don't know the name in, uh, in uh, English, with a grasshopper who is painting. And as you all know, grasshoppers never come alone, they come with thousands. So this grasshopper is painting, it's uh, acrylics with knives. My next painting is acrylics on canvas. 
this uh, globe of the world, there are three people in it, and this globe is going away from the world. My next painting is this Arab man. Uh, I saw him on a medieval uh, market uh, in Spain, and he was so uh, into his mind, so into his uh, faith, so into what he was doing. Uh, so it was full of emotions. It's oil on canvas. Uh, so for me, it's a very special painting. This painting is an abstract work. Used primary colors and uh, softened it with yellow. And the curves are making it moving around. So are these buildings, are these boats with reflection in water? Uh, what's going on? This is for the viewer to decide what he's seeing. I love doing uh, art. So that are my artworks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Ilona. Thank you. Thank you, Ilona. It's uh, great. I mean, I, we have used some of your in our, uh, you know, sharing posts. I personally love uh, the bubble with the pits inside. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of very nice work. Uh, you know, you can see on uh, here. Yeah, thank you, Elena. It's great works and a great way, you know, expressing your works as well. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll be moving into our uh, next artist. Oh, wow. That's nice. Mr. Azubair Shaheen. Azubair Shaheen was born in Sudan. He was graduated from Fine and Applied Art College, Sudan University of Science and Technology. Azubair is a passionate to art and he believes in uh, surrealism school. He believes art in the in a messages and life is art. He believes art is circulating in his uh, veins. That is why he's dedicating himself to art and teaching art and participating in art galleries. So here we can uh, showcase some of his uh, works. A very experienced, I can see very thought process uh, in his work and the scale is amazing. Uh, I mean, it can tell you that uh, the quality of artworks uh, he's been doing uh, um, these are some of the amazing works. Uh, unfortunately, I think he's not here and also Actually, language as yeah, an language issue for is him uh, uh, to communicate. Uh, a lot of our artists has this one of the problem. That's why we are here to talk on behalf of them. But, uh, you know, we are also encouraging the artists to talk, uh, you know, so that, that it's a direct expression. Uh, but it's a beautiful work. Uh, I, I personally tell you that uh, this is very experienced, skilled artist. Uh. Yeah, there are a few digital works and a few original artworks are here. Okay, it's a mix of both. Yeah. So now we will be passing to uh, next other artist. He's Mr. also not available, so we will present him. Yeah. yeah, he's not available, but we can talk about him a bit. Uh, he's, uh, he's Muhammad Fadul Mustafa, is a Sudanese artist, graduated from Fine and Applied Art Coloring College in Sudan. Work at teaching art for about 12 years. His artworks follow the realistic school since the beginning and developed, the, developed with time to reflect nature. Human, anim human, animal, and realistic and vivid colors related to the surrounding environment and places where he lived and experienced life. He uses different techniques to achieve uh, his artworks, colored, oil, acrylic, and watercolor. So we will be showcasing his works. Yeah, these are his, uh, uh, again, you can see the skill level uh, of uh, this artist and the uh, kind of paintings he put together. Beautiful works and again, symbolic to his uh, culture and uh, his country, and there's a lot uh, you, can, you can see from his. Uh, again, I've been keep on telling, uh, you know, every artist inspired by their surroundings and what's happening, it's, uh, it's reflected in their artworks. And that's where Art Smiley is uh, bringing and uh, these kind of what artists from different parts of the world. Uh, so we can see a global diversity and culture in our platform. Yeah. I think uh, we have finished uh, uh, presenting all of our artists. You know, I hope uh, a lot of you have seen it and uh, learned and enjoyed uh, this one. I would like to say some a few last uh, remarks. Uh, you know, I first thank you our uh, special guests, uh, um, Ms. Rana and Mr. Masood. Uh, you know, they've given us their insight. Rana is uh, expressed uh, from in and out of the art, uh, you know, what's happening uh, before pandemic and pandemic and, you know, how we overcome this. Uh, you know, thanks to Rana for great insights and Mr. Masood too. Um, expressing, uh, you know, our sharing his ideas uh, and, uh, you know, talking about his artworks. 
it's been great uh, being both of you on our uh, as a special guest today and i would like to thank you all of our artists uh, you know who been part of this uh, um, you know exhibition and uh, we will be continuing uh, showcasing uh, you all uh, in the double tree by hilton i know it will be displayed over there from uh, tomorrow to for a period of 30 days so anybody who want to visit you know please uh, make sure of following the legal guidelines and local regulations they can visit the hotel you know to uh, to see the works and take some pictures anything or any interest on any of these artworks also you can please directly communicate with us um, you know we will be managing uh, all the relations uh, from the artist front uh, as well so i would like to once again uh, thank you everybody for your time and efforts and putting this uh, together and um, you know we will uh, continue doing our uh, next exhibitions the two together uh, and i wish you all the best and i also like to take some feedback if any one of you have any anything you want to share with us please uh, you know you you have our numbers you have our mail ids you can uh, you know share your feedback uh, you know it will be great to have and we improve uh, working again uh, in the next exhibition okay thank you all of you once again and so much thank you <laughs> thank you thank you very much thank you thank you well done thank you. well done thank you so much thank you thank you very much <laughs> Take have a great day. Thank, have a great day. thank you very much thank for so joining. Or evening, I should say. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everybody. It was good luck, day. everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Anjali. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.